Hey YouTube, Peter Bill Knife Guy. Today I am going to be doing a review of my new purchase, the Doyle 65 pound cast steel anvil from Harbor Freight. These things just came out not that long ago and I am pretty much assuming it's gonna be awesome. Um, Harbor Freight has stepped up their, their quality a lot in the last few years. And uh, back when I used to do a lot of blacksmithing, one of my mo most favorite anvils I ever used was their 110 pound cast steel anvil. It was a Russian made anvil, I believe. I'll put a picture in right now. That was my favorite anvil. Um, <clears throat> so but the problem was, is when I got that, I had to get it uh, on the secondhand market because th those weren't around when I was doing blacksmithing. Um, they were they were already you know discontinued by Harbor Freight, but uh, you can still pick them up from here and there, and they're actually pretty good anvils. They don't have much rebound. They're not super hard, but for a beginner, you know, if you miss strike and you hit the surface, <clears throat> you know you're you're gonna dent it. You're not gonna chip or ruin it. These ones are actually uh, hardened to. Let's see if you can get the specs here. Right there. 65 pounds, cast steel, uh, 55 to 62 Rockwell. There's all the other dimensions. There's a picture. <clears throat> this thing, out the door, Harbor Freight, was 150 bucks with tax and all that other BS. And the great thing about this is you can just go down and pick one up at your local Harbor Freight. So let's tear into this guy and see uh, what she's all about. I actually think I have the package upside down. Yeah, oh, nope, that's right. And of course, you hear my kids playing in the background. Cardboard, lots of cardboard. Plastic, Cosmoline. It's not super heavy, but 65 pounds is still not light. Oh man. I'll tell you what, they package it though. Look at that tube. That'd be fun for a cut. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I will save that and try to cut it. What's in here? Just a lot of cardboard. A lot of freaking cardboard. That's like five pounds of freaking cardboard right there. Alright. Let's take a look at this guy. Are we even in camera? We are. So there she is. The Doyle 65 pound. Uh, anvil from Harbor Freight. Get it off this plastic. It's all slippery because of Cosmoline. Let me go get a rag to wipe this down. All right, found a rag. Used t-shirt. Next best thing. All right, so let's take a look at this. Get this damn greasy Cosmoline shit all over it. So there she is. 65 pound anvil from Harbor Freight. Actually, for the price, it's actually pretty nice. We have a, uh, a three quarter inch Pritchell hole, three quarter inch Hardy hole. They go all the way through the anvil, which is nice. <clears throat> I do not see any points to mount this thing, but being steel should be easy if you wanted to uh, Drill a couple holes, bolt it down to a stump. Uh, it does have a stupid little plate, but whatever. Um, thing I like about this guy, especially when I was doing blacksmithing, because I had a, uh, a 265 pound, what was it? A rigid, rigid petting, petting house, petting house. I don't even know how to spell it.
uh, pronounce it, but uh, one of these guys. Very expensive, very nice anvil. But the thing I loved the most about it was the, the, the horn is an actual cylinder. It's round. Uh, some of these other anvils, they're, they're kind of duckbill shaped. They're flat and weird angles. This one's round, which is very nice. And then the heel. This heel where it tapers back to a point is my favorite part about these type of anvils. It just makes work so much easier when you can get this narrow surface. Um, before you'd use this, you would want to take a, a belt or like a flap wheel and break off all these hard edges. <clears throat> let's find a, uh, let's see if I can find a ball bearing. Cause supposedly it's supposed to have 80% uh, retention or not retention, uh, rebound. All right, I found me a ball bearing. So it's supposed to have 80 to 85% uh, rebound. Says 80% rebound minimum. So let's check that out. Um, yeah, it's got good rebound. Put it up here. Uh, let's see here. 12 inch ruler. I can't even see it. Hold on. There we go. 12 inch ruler. You see the top? Yeah, still can't see the top. But let's bounce it from 10 inches, which is right there. Oh yeah, that's a good 90% rebound. Let's check the butt. all around. Let's check the tail. Tails tend to not have as much rebound because they uh, there's nothing supporting it underneath. But let's check the flatness on this guy. Dead flat. See if any light gets underneath here. I can see the light. You could, if you could see the light, but there's no light coming in across this. This way also, you'd be able to see the light if it was up. No light. It's so pretty dead flat. Pretty awesome. Good rebound. Uh, <clears throat> this is not a professional blacksmithing anvil by any means 65 pounds but one of my more favorite anvils uh like i said was the castile one from uh i think it was a russian anvil like i said from hoarder freight and also uh a 65 it might have been a 72 pound uh peter wright anvil i have had a lot of anvils in my time um there was a, po a point where I was collecting them and then flipping them and using them at the same time. So I have used uh, cast steel, cast iron, cast, uh, oh, what are those ones called? Uh, I can't remember. Malleable iron. I've used farrier anvils. I've used blacksmithing anvils. I've, lit, um, I've used a lot. And, but in all that time, I learned... These shapes are awesome. Um, this has got a nice long face. What are we at? Four and a half inches across is a pretty is a pretty decent face. I mean, even larger anvils, typically you're not going to find a four and a half inch face on a on a 200 pound anvil. They might be four inches, but uh, not four and a half, depending. But uh, let's see, horn seven and a quarter. Yeah, these things are awesome. 150 bucks out the door. That's probably loud as shit. Great, great anvil. You get a chance, go pick one up.